Okay, shalom, yasha Allah, shalom, brothers and sisters, we're back. Salakia for that last video, the device that I was using sort of cut off on me. So here we are with a new device in Salakia. If this format of this device isn't as clear, it's the last one that I was on. But the video and the lesson must go on, right? So in continuation, here we are. We're still in the book of Syrac, which is known as the book of Ecclesiasticus in the hidden books of Apocrypha chapter 12 verses 10 through 18 and it reads as follows never trust thine enemy all right so what this is referring to is the tribe of gad according to the book of genesis 49th chapter in the book of psalm 55th chapter you know never trust thine enemy right so you know when the tribe of gad when they seen those so-called pilgrims or the uh the calvary or what the book of genesis 49th chapter calls them the troop when they seen them coming on to their homeland, man, you know, they shouldn't invite them with open arms. But see, but that's the thing with us, with our people, man. We we are a naturally inviting people. We have a warm, kind spirit. We have a kind heart, man. We're inviting to everyone. So when we seen the, the pilgrims coming over, you know, it looked like they was coming with peace. You know, they had their little plagiarized Bibles in their hand. They came smiling. We didn't see no weapons on them, you know. They said that they came in peace. They looking to come to coexist with us. You know, they looking to build with us and 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 um and learn our heritage. But all of the while in their minds, man, they had war in their minds. Just as it says in the book of Psalm 55th chapter, they was looking to conquer the land, you know, kill off the men, rape the women, enslave the children. Okay. So this is this is what was in their minds, man, as it says here, verse 10 again, never trust nine enemies. But like as iron rusteth, so is this wickedness, all right? So as you can see here, it's written in old English, all right? So we're going to try our best to read this right here. Because as we all know, you know, iron is spelled I-R-O-N. But as it says here, it have Y here instead of the I, right? So, you know, we're going to try our best to go on with it. But as it says here again, never trust thine enemies. For like as iron rusteth, so is this wickedness, verse 11. Though he humble himself and go crouching, Yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him, as it says here, it says V here, but it's really supposed to be a U, right? And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass, all right? So your so called looking glass today would be like your eyeglasses, right? So for the people who have glasses, as they try to get a clearer vision, they take their glasses off and wipe it off with a cloth, right? So as it says here, as if thou has wiped a looking glass and thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. All right. So as it says here in verse 10 again, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. All right. And then back to verse 11. And thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. So that's the enemy, man. You know, as they come couching like, you know, like they're humble. You got to take good heed, man, because that's how the, the devils move, man. That's how the snakes move, according to the book of Genesis, right? They come with subtlety. You know, they come with craftiness, cunningness, all right? So this is what happened to the Native American Indians, man. Verse 12. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up, okay? So as you can see here, it's supposed to be a U, but it's a V here, right? He stand up in thy place, okay, what is thy place? America, all right? So this is what the enemy did, man. They came over here, they fooled us, they tricked us, they conquered us, raped our women, enslaved the children, and they took over the country, man. So as it says here again, set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, okay? You know, so as the, the old saying goes in the hood, you know, when... When someone is at your right side, they're your, your right hand man, they're your boy, you know, they're, they're your, your ace spoon coon, so to speak, right? They're your homie, right? So as it says here, neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat, okay? Which is the country, once again, you know, thy seat, America. And thou at the last remember my words, okay, and be pricked therewith. Okay, so what's the words that the Most High is talking about? He's talking about 
the keeping of the law, statutes, the commandments, the, the knowledge and the, and the wisdom of the scriptures, the wisdom of who your, your enemy is, your natural born enemy, okay? As it says here again in verse 10, never trust thine enemies, okay? As it says here, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness, all right? And then it says here again in verse 12, lest he seek to take thy seat, and thou at the last remember my words, okay, which is the knowledge of these scriptures, and be pricked therewith, verse 13. Who will pity a charmer? Okay, as, again, it's written in old English, right? So instead of the Y, it have a I E, okay? So who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent, okay? So who's going to pity a charmer, man? You know what I'm saying? If he's telling you that he's a professional, he works with snakes and vipers all the time. He, he's never been bitten a day in his life dealing with snakes, including the snake that he's presently working with. But when the snake turns around and bites him and poison him, who's going to pity him? He's been telling everyone he's a professional, right? So you're not supposed to go in danger, man, and then expect for someone to have a, a pity party for you afterwards, right? As it says here, who would pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent? Or any such as come near wild beasts. All right. So if you're going near a wild beast, a wild dog, a, a rabid raccoon, okay? Or if you're in the jungle somewhere, or if you're in the forest somewhere, a ferocious bear, okay? A wolf or whatever, you know, a, a, a jaguar, a cheetah, some hyenas, okay? That's your wild beast, man. Your wild, ferocious beast, man. Or any such as come near a wild beast. So one that goeth to a sinner, okay, who's the ultimate sinner of the world. I mean, all we have to do is just look around, man, okay? And you will see, you will notice who the true sinner of the world is, right? Verse 14 again at the top. So one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him and his sins, okay, who will pity? Okay, so if you're defiled with the sinner with his sins, who's going to pity you? All right. If the most high judge you for keeping the vain customs of this land. OK, which is Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter. OK, who's going to pity you? Because the scriptures is right here, man. It's right here for everyone to read. According, you know, to me, bringing it out in this video right here, you know, just from you hearing this video and seeing these scriptures should encourage you to look at the scriptures yourself. All right. So who's going to pity you, man, when the most high decides to judge you? For, for sinning, which is the iniquity, which is the transgression of the Most High's laws, man. Right? So as it says here again, so one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins, who will pity? Verse 15. For a while he will abide with thee, but if thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, okay? The so-called Calvary, the so-called troop, the pilgrims, okay? And enemies speak of sweetly with his lips. So this is how they come, man. They come with subtlety. They come with cunningness, craftiness, okay? Crafty counsel, secretly crafty counsel, man, right? And enemies speak of sweetly with his lips, but in his heart, which is his mind, he imagined how to throw thee into a pit, okay? So this is what they was doing with the Native Americans, Indians, man, unfortunately. They was digging up a massive grieve man and and dumping all of the indians the so-called indians that they massacred into that massive grave man right not only the native american indians but the so-called negroes too man okay in slavery and chattel slavery all right and and also during the jim crow era right an enemy speak of sweetly with his lips but in his heart he imagines how to throw thee into a pit he will weep with his eyes but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood, okay? So this is what the enemy did, man. The so-called pilgrims, man, they weren't satisfied with blood, all right? They wanted to take the land. They wanted to take the women, rape the women, have their children with the so-called Native Americans, right? Spreading their wicked seed all over the place, right? So this is what they wanted to do, man. They wasn't satisfied with blood, man. They weren't satisfied with building that massive grave, to dump the so-called Native Americans in and the so-called Negroes in slavery in, man, right? He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood, verse 17. If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first, okay? 
So when all of the atrocities was happening to the so-called Native American Indians, man, who was there first? The so-called pilgrims, right? The so-called troop, as according to the book of Genesis 49th chapter, right? The so-called Calvary, okay? If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. And this also can be referred to nowadays to Salakia. This also can be referred to what's going on today. You know, even in modern day terms, man, when adversity begins to come about you, man, then all you got to do is look around. You're going to see the person who's hating on you the most there. OK, no matter if it's there in your presence, no matter if it's like on a phone call or whatever, when things start to go bad, they're usually the first one to call you. But they're trying to act like, you know, they're, they're all good with you. They're cool with you and they're there to help you. Right. So all of this can be applied to today, man. You know, the, the, the scriptures is for everlasting, man. Right. It's a timeless book. Right. So as it says here again, verse 17, if adversity come upon you, D, thou shall find him or her there first. And thou and though he pretend to help thee, as I was saying before, right, yet shall he undermine thee. OK, so this goes for everyone, man. You know, this this right here. This is a real good uh, uh, proverb here, man, for the people out here. Not only did this happen in the past to all of our ancestors, man, but this actually can be applied today. OK, so if there's anyone out there hating on you. And when trouble starts to befall you, man, just look around. The ones that's actually causing it more than likely is going to be the one that's closest to you. They're going to be the one that's around you, the one that you see, man. They're going to be the more the, the, the main culprits of that what's going on with you right verse 18 he will shake his head and clap his hands and whisper much and change his countenance meaning his countenance is going to change from being welcoming and friendly and inviting to someone who's just your straight out enemy just a straight hate of you right so all of that is going to change man right so we're going to go to the book of Hosea chapter 2 so lucky if this phone is moving a little slow but once again this is your brother Yashara Chazak from the seed souls of Israel and the milk delivers of Israel once again sowing that seed and delivering that milk to all of our people out there the so called descendants of the end slaves which is the so called Negro Hispanic Native American and Seminole Indian for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to understand to spread this message abroad, right? So here we are in the book of Hosea, chapter 12. Salakia, as a matter of fact, you know what? Chapter 2. In the book of Hosea, chapter 2. And I'm going to go down to verse 11. And it reads as follows. I will also curse all her mirth to cease. Okay, so this is what the Most High is going to do, man, soon. All right, when he sent his son Hamashiach back for the second coming, right? I will also cause all her mirth. Okay, the mirth is the gatherings, right? The partying. The celebration, okay, your so-called Thanksgiving, the so-called Christmas that's coming up in a few weeks, right? Your so-called New Year's, all right, in the depth of winter, right? When everything's dead, you know, there's no grass, there's no flowers, there's no leaves on the trees. It's like 10 degrees below zero. Like, how can that be the new year, man? How can that be the, the year of beginnings, okay, as the scriptures say, right? The year of beginnings, man, is when you see flowers growing, man, when you see the grass growing. When you see that the trees are starting to bud, right? You see the birds are coming back from the south, right? So that's the real new year, man, okay? But what the Most High says again in the book of Hosea, I will also cause all her mirth to cease. Her feast days, okay, which is your so-called feast days, all right? Your Thanksgiving, okay? Your Christmas, your New Year's, your Easter, all right? Your birthday. OK, Valentine's Day, Halloween. OK. 
I will cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts, okay? So the days that we're supposed to be keeping, especially when we was in our homeland, the Most High caused all of that to cease, man. That's the reason why our people don't keep those days no more. Majority of our people, man, the so-called two-thirds. They don't even know what the seventh-day Sabbath is, most of them, man, because they haven't been taught that. Because religious Christianity and Roman Catholicism just teaches them to come to church on a Sunday and just drop all of their money in the, in the collection plate and call it a day and hear a good song and a good feel-good story, and that's it. You know, they're not, they're not taught repentance in these churches, man. Most of our people don't even know what repent is. And if they do know what repent was, they don't even know what to repent from because the churches don't even teach that, man. All right, so that's the reason why most of our people are lost, man. They destroyed spiritually. And the Most High is not hearing their prayers, man, because they're in sin. All right, they're breaking the seventh day Sabbath. They're breaking the dietary law, in which they're going to do for Thanksgiving, by the way. Okay? They're celebrating all of the vain customs of this society here today. All right, so our people are in the midst of sin, man, and they don't even know it, right? So this is what the Most High did, man. That's the reason why we don't keep all of our old ordinances, man, except for the people who's walking that straight and narrow path, the so-called hopeful elect, the one-third, the ones that's keeping the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High, man, and believing in his one and only true son, Hamashiach, right? But this is what the Most High did to our people, man. I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days and her new moons and her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts, okay? Verse 13. And I will visit upon her the days of Belem, where she had burnt incense to him, and she had decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers, okay, whose lovers, those are the false idols, man, Allah, Buddha, okay, St. Mary in Roman Catholicism, all right, the image of the beast himself in religious Christianity, all right, all of your ancient Greek gods and, and fraternities and sororities, okay, secret societies worshiping Lucifer himself, okay, so that's the that's the, the idol lovers that this is being spoken about here, man, in verse 13 in Hosea 2, right? And I will visit upon her the days of Belem, wherein she burnt incense to him. So this is what our people do, man. Most of the women in our nation of people, man, when they burn incense in their house, they're not burning it to the most high, the God of the Bible. They burning it to Allah. They burning it to Buddha. They burning it to Krishna and Shiva and Hinduism, Okay and Jainism to the multiple gods, polytheists, okay? This is who they burn in the incense to, man. They're not burning uh, 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 merith and frankincense to the Most High, the God of the Bible, man, and which are the scents that we're required to burn to the Most High, which is the best sense of the world, man, which is frankincense and merith, right? As it says here again, verse 13, and I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, where she burned incense to him, and she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, okay? So this is what our women do, man. When they go to Sunday's church, as I was saying in my previous video, man, you know, they throw that blonde wig on, they throw them tight dresses on, they have a ring on every finger, they have crazy makeup on, looking all like a clown up in, in the midst of the congregation, the fake congregation, by the way. That's not the real congregation of the world, the, the, the Lord, man. The most high deals... What the, the, the people who's keeping his laws, statutes, commandments as his congregation, man, right? Not in religious Christianity or Roman Catholicism, man, right? So this is what our women do, man. They rush to them churches. They have the earrings on. They have the tight dresses on. They have the blonde wigs on. You know, the dudes, they walk up in there with skin-tight jeans on. The blazer is tight. They can't even breathe in it. You know what I'm saying? Looking all effeminate, right? So this is what they do, man. Verse 13 again. And I will visit upon her the days of Belem, okay, which is basically the spiritual demon Satan, right? Wherein she burnt incense to him, okay? And she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers, and forget me, saith the Lord, okay? So this is what our people do, man, when they go up in those uh, Christian churches and those Catholic churches, man. When they when they practice uh, uh, yoga and, and Buddhism, man freeing your mind and all that man you're not supposed to free your mind man you're supposed to keep your mind meditated on the laws day and night as the scripture saith, man in the book of joshua chapter one all right that's how you're supposed to meditate man and it doesn't mean go sit somewhere with your legs folded in a quiet room man it means to always dwell upon the laws in your mind man always think about it 
always apply the laws when you're out and about, man. That's what that means to meditate, man. All right? Not to sit somewhere with your, your hands in a 666 symbol with your legs folded, rocking back and forth, trying to free your mind, man. That's not meditation, man. All right? Verse 13 again. And I will visit upon her the days of Belem, where she had burnt incense to him, and she had decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers, okay? Once again, that's the false idols, man. That's what this is concerning, right? And she forgot me, saith the Lord. Okay, so this is what our people do, man. When they celebrate all of the vain customs of the world, they forget the most high God of the Bible, right? So we're going to go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11. Once again, hopefully that this video is gratifying and edifying and enjoyable to all of the people that's watching it thus far. Hopefully that you have your Bibles out so you can be reading yourself. And, you know, let's edify one another, man. You know, and if you want to drop something down in, a, in the comment section, it's all good. You know, let's build together, right? So, Salakia, we're going to go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11 and we're going to go down to verse 26 once again Salakia if my device is moving a little bit too slow okay here we go we're in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 26 and it reads follows. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if ye, which is the most highest chosen people, the 12 tribes of Israel, which is you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, by the way, the so-called descendants of the enslaved, right? Or the oppressed, or the ones that's in captivity and scattered all across the world, right? Just to throw that in there, verse 26 again from the top. Behold, I set before you this day, okay, this very day, all right, a blessing and a curse. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which is the most high, the God of the Bible, right, which I command you this day, and a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day, to go after other gods, okay? Who's your other gods? That's your God of batches, all right? That's giving you this two days off for Thanksgiving right now, as it says, you know, for the Feast of Batches. You know, he relieved the people with wine and in two days off of slavery, of their of so-called slavery of their work, right? Their daily work, right? So that's basically what Thanksgiving is, okay? That's what that is. And Christmas, you know, you have so-called Christmas Eve, and Christmas, you know, some jobs, not all jobs, but some jobs have the benefit of having those two days off, man. You know, they have off the day before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Eve, and they have Thanksgiving. And for Christmas coming up, you have Christmas Eve and Christmas off, right? So that's exactly what Batches did, man. The ancient Greco-Roman god Batches, you know, he, he gave people wine. They had a big celebration. And then they had a relief off from their, their daily so-called slavery of, of daily life. OK, so that's what that is, man. You're going after after a different God. And we already determined what's the true definition of Thanksgiving. Right. Which is a secular holiday, which have nothing to do with the scriptures or God, the most high or Christ whatsoever. Right. So as it says here again in verse 28 and a curse. If ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day. OK. To go after other gods. Who's those other gods? As I just mentioned, you know, the, the ancient Greco-Roman god, Batches, or Allah in Mohammed, okay? Buddha in Buddhism, Shiva and Krishna in, in Hinduism, okay? Uh, multiple gods in Jainism. Uh, uh, African spirituality, calling on your so-called ancestors, okay? All of that is nonsense. All of that stuff is not biblical, man. 
And, and quite frankly, that's it's all demonic. If you're calling on any other God besides the God of the Bible, man, right? Which I command you this day to go after other gods, which ye have not known, okay? So as far as our ancestors, man, they didn't know all of these gods. They didn't know no God of Hinduism. They didn't know no God of Buddhism. They didn't know anything about religious Christianity or Roman Catholicism, okay? Which is the, the Christian of Jesuits, and which is the Antichrist, by the way. Okay, we didn't know anything about calling on our ancestors. Okay, all of that stuff is new, man. You know, the, the, the ancestors of our people, according to the biblical scripture, man, we always called on the Most High and believed in his son, Hamashiach. Okay, we're going to go to chapter 13 in the book of Deuteronomy. Okay, we're in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 13. And we're going to go down to verse 6. And it reads as follows. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, okay, which is basically your blood brother, right? Or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife. Of thy bosom or thy friend, okay, which is your ace, boom, coon, your boy, right? Which is as thy own soul, okay, which is your body, by the way, okay? Entice thee secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods, okay? Oh, come on, let's go, let's go celebrate Thanksgiving, man. You know, you know mom's going to have that turkey on the table, right? You know aunt such and such is going to have that turkey on the table, right? You know, they're going to have that nice ham up there. They might have a few crab legs, they might have some shrimp up there, might have some roast duck up there. They're going to have the, the candied yams. They're going to have the collard greens, with the pork all up in there, right? So this is what they're saying, man. Which is of thy own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. Namely, of the gods of the people which are all around about you. So who's the people that's round about us, man? Those are the so-called Gentiles, man. Those are the people of the other nations. Those are the ones that's enticing us to stay in this spirit of keeping Thanksgiving. And then they already have Christmas things up. You go to all of these stores here, man. You drive past a few houses. They have Christmas lights already up. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they enticing you to stay in sin, man. So the most high don't hear your prayers, man. That's the only time that the most high don't hear your prayers is when you're in sin, man. Okay? So this is what they do, man. Verse 7 again. Namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you, near unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. All right? Verse 8. Thou shalt not consent unto them, nor hearken unto them, Neither shall thy eye pity them, neither shall thou spare, neither shall thou conceal him, okay? So this is not what we're supposed to do, man. We're not supposed to hearken on to the people who we know or the people that's close to us, enticing us to worship other gods or partake in, in the worship of other gods, man. Partaking in Thanksgiving, partaking in Christmas, which have nothing to do with Christ whatsoever. Partaking in New Year's, so-called New Year's, okay? Easter which have nothing to do with Christ whatsoever, once again, but basically, which is the worship of Semiramis, Nimrod, and Tammuz, okay? So when you have your people telling you to do that, man, you're not supposed to hearken on to them, all right? But rather reprove them, rebuke them, and reprove them and let them know that they're going off, and this is not what you're supposed to be doing, according to the biblical scriptures, man, right? So we're going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 2. And we're going to end that there. Okay, here we go in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, 
And I'm going to go down to verse 20 through 23, and it reads as follows. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffereth that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants. Who's my servants? The most highest chosen people, man, all together, right? The one third and including the two third, right? This is what Jezebel is doing, the, the spiritual demon Jezebel, man, which is on most of our women, by the way. All right. That's the reason why I said this is, this is the reason why most of them, they go up in these religious churches, man, with the tight skirts on. They have the blonde wigs or any other colorful wig. It doesn't always have to be blonde. All right. But it, it's, it's red or it's blue. It's green looking like a witch. You know what I'm saying? It's all kinds of craziness. Right. So that's what you call women that have the spiritual demon Jezebel on her, man, right? As it says here again, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffereth that women Jezebel, which call herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols, okay? So this is what they're doing, man. You know, even the, the women within our nation of people, man, you know, they... They 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 are uh, they they're basically enticing their husbands to stay in sin. Oh, let's go by my house. You know she got that that turkey on the on the table as I was saying before, right? Got all of the fixings on the table. Got the turkey. Got the ham. Got the roast duck. Got your your shellfish on there. Got your collard greens up there with the pork all up in there. You know what I'm saying? So this is what they do, man. To teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrifice onto idols which is that turkey that ham okay you sacrificing that to the the the, the ancient greco-roman god the batches okay and i gave her space to repent fornication of her fornication salakia and she repented not so this is what the most high is doing this is what true grace is man you know what i'm saying to recognize that you're in sin and to repent of that sin you know, you, you, you have to, to tell the most high that you recognize that you're in sin, acknowledge your sin and repent and come back into keeping the law, statutes, commandments of the most high, man. As a nation of people, this is what we're supposed to be doing. If you want the most high to hear your, your, your prayers and if you want to have a chance at salvation, making the kingdom, man. OK. And I gave her a space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. So you can actually refer this to our people, too, man. You know, the most high, just like I was saying, he's giving you the mercy and the grace to repent, man. But a lot of our people just refuse to do it, man. They think that we're in for everlasting grace. They think that this society is going to last forever. All of these wicked, vain customs. And they just go ahead and just live their life, man. No matter with, with all of the atrocities that's going on today. With the so-called the, the so COVID-19, right? You have the, the, the forced vaccinations that's coming. That's coming on to our people. As I was saying before, you know, if you're working, you're going to have to take that vaccine. And if you don't, then you're going to lose your job. If you're working in the military, you're going to have to take that vaccine. If you're working for the government in any sort of job, any sort of way, you're going to have to take that vaccine. For kids to get back into school or if you want to go into college, you're going to have to take that vaccine. All of that stuff is coming, man. I'm telling you, watch. It's already mandated today. Look at the people that's been diagnosed with COVID-19. Can they go back to work? I don't think so. Most of those people are home, man. And then the messed up thing about it, they don't have no income coming in. All right. The second stimulus is on halt. They don't have no income coming in, no job, no unemployment. Right. You have nearly 40 million people out of work. They're losing their apartments. They're being evicted out of their apartments. They're being foreclosed out of their homes. The car is being repossessed. Right. They could barely buy food can barely keep the lights on in their house okay so all of this is going on man but they're not talking about this on the national news because they don't want it to be an uproar of the people you know what i'm saying but if you diligently search these things out man you will see it all of this stuff is going on man and it's all up under our nose and we don't even know about it because we would rather have fun you know we would rather think about something that's positive you know just keep our mind off all of the activity that's going on in this world man right so this is why a lot of people is going to be be taken off by storm, man. Okay, so as it says here again, verse 21, 
and I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Verse 22, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her, okay, if you're committing adultery, if you're in the sins, if you're keeping the vain custom of this society, okay, behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into a great tribulation, okay, that tribulation is now, the so-called COVID-19, the forced vaccinations, okay, not being able to buy and sell, not being able to go into certain stores, okay, if you don't have that vaccine, all right? So you're going to have a lot of people out here that don't want to take that vaccine, man. They're not going to be able to buy and sell. They're not going to be able to work, meaning they're not going to be able to keep a house. They're not going to be able to keep a car. They're not going to be able to keep a, an apartment, okay? So what's next after that? FEMA camps, okay? Oh, they, they, they got plenty of residents there for you. All right. But who who knows what what the hell is going on in those FEMA camps, man? And then on top of that, when you get there, you still want to be forced to take the vaccine because they're going to tell you you can't live amongst the people here and you're not vaccinated. You're a threat to society. OK, so you're going to have to take that vaccine one way or another. All right. So as it says here again, man. Verse 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into a great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. OK, repentance is repentance of sins. OK, what is the sin? The sin is the transgression of the most high law, statutes, commandments. All right. Keeping the high holy days, keeping the seventh day Sabbath, keeping the dietary law, not keeping the wicked, vain customs of this society of this world today. All right. That's what repentance is all about. Something that's not taught in these religious churches, man, in religious Christianity and Roman Catholicism, let alone in Islam and Buddhism and Hinduism. All right. Verse 22 again. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into a great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. OK. So I'm going to drop this here, man. Hopefully that this video was enjoyable. Hopefully that it was edifying. Hopefully everybody had their Bibles out reading along with me. And once again, this is your brother, Yashara Chazak, when the seed sold to Israel and the milk delivers of Israel. Sowing that seed to our people and delivering that milk to our people, the so-called the descendants of the enslaved, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, with eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to understand. All right. So once again, love is love. Until the next time, Shalom.